So how many of you have watched the movie Snow White? Put up your hand. Great. So in the movie Snow White, we learn that the evil queen has a talking mirror. And sometimes this mirror is her friend, and sometimes the mirror is her enemy. And so I wanted to do some research, and I wanted to find out at what age do people see Snow White for the very first time. And so when I, I um, pulled my Facebook tribe, I found out that 88% of people had watched Snow White by the age of six. Well, and most of them had watched it by the age of four. Well, I actually believe that we learn that the mirror talks when we're even younger than that. And I actually believe we learn it at about the age of two. And the reason I believe that is because I have identical twin boys. And I wanted to know, when my twins look in the mirror, do they know it's themselves, or do they think it's their twin brother? And so one day, I heard some, one of my twins laughing hysterically. And I thought, oh my god, what is he laughing about? So I go into the bathroom, and I see him standing on the counter, and he's pointing to the mirror, and he goes, Mom, look, Cody's laughing at me. And so that was my answer that at two years old, you learn that the mirror talks to you. And so here, I couldn't find a picture of my twins talking in the mirror, but I thought this was kind of cool because, you know, my twins were kind of monkeys at, you know, two years old. So I thought, this is, this is kind of crazy. So he had an amazing experience with the mirror. Me, on the other hand, my experience was very negative and very confusing with the mirror. So, you see, I got burnt when I was two years old to most of my body. So, my, basically, my whole body is covered in scars except for a strip in my back and also my legs. And so, when I would look in the mirror, I would say, yuck! Who's going to love that? Because all I saw was my ugly scars. And one day, I walked past my teacher's desk. This was in grade five. And this is what I saw. So someone had drawn a picture of me and it said Scarface on it. And I knew at that point that that's what the kids were calling me, the Scarface girl. And so every two years, I would have to go to the, to the hospital and my doctor would, you know, do a surgery on me. And, um, you know, one time my arm was joined to my body so he, and it would only move like this, and so he would have to slice open my arm, and he would put skin grafts here, and he put a body cast on me, and I had to walk that way for six months, solid. Uh, there's other times when uh, my, my doctor had to um, take skin from my legs, and he put it underneath where my breasts would be, so that I would have better movement, and I would actually grow breasts. And so I had probably about 40 surgeries over my whole lifetime. And so every time I would look in the mirror and I would hope that I would be beautiful, but I heard my mirror say, you're so ugly. And I remember being 16 and praying to God and saying, dear God, can I at least be scarless so I can be pretty like all the other girls? And I remember waking up in the morning and I knew I would still be alive, but when I looked in the mirror, I heard the mirror say, yuck, again. The scars are still there. And I was devastated because all I wanted was to be pretty like all the other girls. I didn't want to be the Scarface girl anymore. I just wanted to be pretty. And so, as I grew up, I didn't ever think I'd get married because I was the ugly girl. I didn't ever think I would get, you know, to have kids, but I did. And, um, and I realized that the mirror doesn't lie. And it was very fascinating for me because there was lots of times when I would talk to my friends and they would say to me, but Kel, after five minutes of talking to you, I don't see your scars anymore. And it was so confusing for me because I thought, what do you mean, my scars haven't disappeared? Of course the scars are still there. So how is it that you can say that you don't see my scars anymore? Because they're still there. 
And I realized what was happening is that people were seeing my energy. They weren't seeing my scars. They were seeing everything that was beautiful about me. They weren't seeing what was ugly about me. They were seeing the beauty. And so as I, when I got married, I decided that I was done feeling like the ugly girl. I thought, I don't want to feel ugly anymore. I don't want to be the scar-faced girl anymore. I want to be beautiful. And when I had my twins, I was, uh, you know, I mean, I, I would look in the mirror, and again, I would say yuck because I still felt pregnant, and I still felt like I looked pregnant even though I wasn't. And I thought, you know, what should I, what should I do? Maybe I should change my body. Maybe I should, you know, get a new nipple made. And believe me, you don't want to do that. It's painful, apparently. I didn't get it done, but uh, I thought, you know, maybe that will make me feel more beautiful. And then I thought, well, what about my ear? Maybe I should get a new ear made. Maybe that having a new ear will make me look beautiful and make me feel beautiful. And I decided not to do that either because I thought, why am I doing that? Just so somebody else looking at me can think I'm more beautiful? And I thought, I don't want to do that. Because this is what they would have done. They would have had to cut off this ear. They would have made a prosthetic ear out of, with a mold from this ear. And then I would have had a snap-on ear. And I thought, what if I forget to put my ear on? Right? <laughs> then what? You know, then what are people going to think? Right? And so I thought, I don't want a snap-on ear. And I thought, I don't see my ear, so why am I so worried about what everybody else thinks of me? And I believe that that's the problem, is that we're so worried about what everybody thinks of us. So, I want to share with you what I did. Because people ask me many times, how did you feel beautiful? What did you do? And so here's what I did, because I was tired. I was tired of feeling ugly. And I went into the mirror, and instead of saying, I am beautiful, because every time I would say to the mirror, I am beautiful, my mirror would say, yuck. So this time what I did is I made sure nobody was home. So my, my former husband was gone, the kids were gone, nobody was home, nobody could distract me. I went into my bedroom, bathroom, and I closed the door, and I said, I'm going to give myself permission to love me. And so I looked in the mirror, and instead of saying, I am beautiful, I said, I happen to love my big, beautiful green eyes. The mirror didn't talk back. Did you guys hear the mirror? No. So then I said again, I happen to love my cute little nose. And the mirror didn't say anything again. And then I looked at my ear, and I said to myself, you know what, I love my cute little ear. It makes me special, it makes me different, it makes me unique. And again, I didn't hear the mirror again. It didn't say anything. And then I looked in the mirror one more time. And this time I turned around, and I was wearing my favorite dreams, and I looked at my butt, and I said, you know what? I happen to love my cute little hot butt. And the mirror didn't say anything. Did you guys hear the mirror talk? None of you guys could hear the mirror talk, right? Because that's the whole thing. The mirror doesn't talk. The mirror doesn't have emotions, it doesn't have feelings, it can't talk to you. The mirror can't lie because it can't talk. Those are our thoughts in our head. We are the ones who are making ourselves feel ugly. And so that leads me to my next point, which is, ugly is still beautiful. The you stands for unique. Every single person here is unique. You are all different and special and unique. And can you imagine if we lived in a world where we all looked the same? It wouldn't be that unique, right? And how would we even be able to decide what each person should look like? 
We even have beauty contests to try and decide who is the most beautiful person in the world. And we can't decide all the time. So we are all unique. Let's celebrate our differences. The G stands for gorgeous. Quit comparing yourself to other people. And I know that that was one of the things that I would do, is that I would compare myself to other women. And I would think, well, I would never be as gorgeous as that person because I'm covered in scars. But we are all gorgeous in our own unique way, and we need to stop comparing ourselves to other people. And the L stands for lovable. I can promise you that you are loved. Every single one of us is loved. And we are all lovable. And sometimes people just don't know to tell us and when we need to hear it. But we are all lovable people. And the Y stands for you. The unique, gorgeous, lovable you is still beautiful. And now, I want to um, circle back to Snow White. Snow White, to me, when I grew up, was the epitome of beauty. And it wasn't because she had flawless skin or because she had perfect hair. It was because she truly knew where her inner beauty came from. All the animals loved her. All the seven dwarfs loved her. And she just knew that she had to be kind and love and, and was so non-judgmental. And that was why everybody was so drawn to her. And that was why everybody thought that she was so beautiful. And even the old wicked witch, when she came to her with that apple and how ugly she looked, Snow White still found a way to be kind and loving to her. And so I want to share with you this message. Let's not worry about being ugly because the unique, gorgeous, lovable you is still beautiful. I am Kelly Falardo. Thank you. <laughs>